in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you. We're going to talk about, you know, we're, we're living in, the, in, the, in, a, in a very difficult hour. This is, you know, we're, we're talking about, we were back there talking about some of the ministries that have fallen. And, you know, my heart breaks for that. I don't, I don't, I don't take it lightly. I don't, I don't rejoice over that. Because, brother, we need every warrior on the battlefield to reach the harvest. We need everybody out there. To reach the harvest for the Lord. And uh, keep these people in prayer. You know, hopefully they'll, uh, God, God will stir them up to get back to him quickly. Amen. And uh, we need to really pray that God will help them. Uh, we're talking about these ministries, and then we're, we talk about the weather, the patterns, the weather patterns going on. These things are, are hitting harder and harder. One, one, one town, I don't know if it was in Kansas or Kentucky, got hit by I don't know how many tornadoes at one time, and it totally devastated the city. And, uh, and, and, I, and I mean, this is not normal, it's not natural. Are you with me, church? They had a, a 7.4 earthquake in Taiwan, amen, and it affected all the way down into to part of China, part of Japan, and, and then part of another little country there. It hit there too. And, and listen, God, God is talking to the world. He's speaking to the world, but listen, listen to me. But he's speaking to the church. And sometimes the church, we see all these things going on, and we hear about them on, on the television, the news, or whatever, and we, we just look at it like it's just an ordinary thing, like it's just another thing going on. Oh, but brother, I want to tell you, it's not. Are you with me, church? It's not. This is, this is God talking to the world. Let's talk to the, to the church first because the church has the answer to life. And then he's talking to those that don't know him. Trying to stir them up to, to realize they need, they need someone greater than, their, than themselves. And so I, I'm praying that Lord, you got to, you got to move, move at New Hope. I want him to move here, church. I want him to stir us up. I want him to, to, to lift us up and use us as a light in the midst of darkness to reach this dying world. It's, it's dying, church. Give him praise. I was reading, the other day I was reading the Bible about the end times. But I came across a scripture that really caught my eyes. And I want to give it to you tonight. We're going to go into the word. 
uh, tonight. But this scripture is found in Luke chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 32 to verse 35. This is a, a powerful, these are powerful verses because, listen to me, they're not my verses. These are God's verses. This is God's word being given to us. You and I, you and I see that. It, it's, it's, it's His word. How many understand we're serving Him? We're serving the Lord. And more than anything, He's the one we need to seek for more than anything in life. So look what He says here, verse 32, He says, And do not be afraid and anxious, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, show compassion, and give donations to the poor. Provide money, belts for yourself that do not wear out, and unfailing and inexhaustible treasures in the heavens, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Imagine what he's talking about there. You know, look at this. He's not telling you to give everything you own or everything you got. He say, "Don't be, don't be stingy. Help people. Help. Listen, we gotta help. We gotta help the, the people. We gotta do it. Say, say with me, we gotta do it. As a, as a church, as a body, we've got to gather together. And I include myself there and, and everybody else. We've got to help people." Look what verse 34 says. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. How many, you know, if your treasure is in heaven, nothing can tie you down here. Are you with me? Listen to me. He's not against you having a nice house and cars and all that. He's not against all that. Don't, don't get me wrong. But he's against you just loving them, falling in love with those things that, that, that you can't get enough and you keep going for more and more and more and more. No, listen, listen to me. We have to, we have to wake up and say, wait a minute, I've got to love the Lord more than I love anything else. How many here can say, I love the Lord more than I love anything else? And, and look what he says. Be dressed and ready for active service. You need to uh, highlight this, this, this verse right here. Be dressed and ready for active service. And keep your lamps continuously burning. Keep, keep your lamps. You know, you, know you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that you and I are lamps. And we got to keep these lamps burning with the oil, the oil, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We got to keep it going. We, listen, listen, don't let it run out. Don't, don't let your fire go out. Don't let, you know, don't let all that happen to you. You know, you, you've got to keep the oil burning in that lamp. You are the light of the world. Say it with me, I am the light of the world. And so I've got to keep the oil burning. Praise this mighty name. Are you with me tonight, church? Oh, Father, help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Look at, look at verse 36. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that when he comes and knocks, they may immediately open the door for him. As well, one more. Blessed and happy and prosperous to be admired are those servants when the master finds awake and watching when he arrives. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, he will prepare himself to serve 
and will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. Wow. What a, what a powerful God we serve. Aren't you, aren't you glad you serve the Lord? I mean, look, look, listen to me. He's saying, for everything you and I did here, for everything you and I got into, involved here to help his kingdom, to help reach the lost for his kingdom, listen, the time is coming when he's going to serve you. He's going to wait on you at that table. What a powerful God we serve. There's a story I want to give to you real quickly here. And most of you know the story of the Titanic. The Titanic was a ship that they built. It was like a, like a cruiser, a big ship. And it was supposed to be a ship that was unsinkable. Nothing could sink it, they said. That's what they said. You know, one commentator said, and I, and I want to tell you something. One commentator said this, not even God himself can sink it. Are you with me, church? One of the men that built that ship said those words. And, and the, there was a lot of people on that ship. They only had enough boats, lifeboats, for a few hundred people to get on because they, they believed that it was unsinkable. So they didn't prepare the way they should have. But as they were going, <coughs> they say that there was another ship that had stopped and he was caught within the icebergs that were around that ocean. And he radioed the Titanic to let him know to stop, not to come any further, because the icebergs would, would hit him and it would destroy their ship. Well, they, they didn't listen. They laughed at this man. They laughed at him. How many people do you know in life, let me say this to you, that when you tell them about the Lord and they, uh, and they look at you, or even Christians, and they tell you, Oh, I've heard that before. Nothing's ever happened. We're still going. Is there anybody with me? Hey, let, let me tell you something. Don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. He's coming back. It's going to happen. Yeah, you better give him praise. That night, the ship at sea was, were aware of the position of the iceberg and they tried to warn the Titanic via the ship wireless, tried to wire them. One ship's operator aboard the California wired, say, old man, we are stopped and surrounded by ice. But one operator aboard the Titanic, busily trying to keep up with sending and receiving the numerous messages of her. Are you with me tonight? Said, hastily wired back. And this was what he told the man that tried to warn them. Shut up. I'm busy. Wow. Ain't that something? Isn't that something? Have, has, has anybody ever told you I don't want to hear it? Oh, no, no, look, look at me. Look at me over here. Has anybody ever told you I don't want to hear it? Uh, I'm not ready. Not right now. Come on. Oh, church. We're, 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 the people are waking up. They're not, they're not snapping. No not slapiando, brother. They're not waking up to the time and the hour that we're in. But, but I want to talk to you about the church. I want to talk to you about the church because you and I need to be the, the, the ones that are getting in there and, and grabbing a hold of these people and bringing them into the Lord. They, they've got to have, listen to me, 
they cannot just believe there's a God. They've got to know this God. They've got to have a born again experience with him. They, they've got to come to have a relationship with a God that created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Come on. They've, they've got to have a, 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 a relationship. Listen, uh, an experience. They've got to have it. An experience with, with the Holy Spirit. It used to it used to really get me really get me bugged uh, when, when people would talk crazy about the Holy Spirit. Man, it would really get me man, it would get me upset because people don't understand what they're talking about. But listen to me. How do you know when when you're you are, are, are getting away from where you used to be? How do you know? No, listen. It's, it's very important. You, you, you lose interest in certain spiritual things. You start losing interest in your Bible, you'll pick up your Bible once in a while, but not all the time. You'll, you'll lose interest in, in even in prayer. Oh, you'll pray, you know, just a little bit, you know, but, but to really take the time to kneel down and call on God and seek the Lord and pray, uh, not really. We start losing that. And remember the excitement we had when, when, when we were able to talk to somebody, tell somebody about the one that we loved, about the one that saved us. We wanted to let them know, man, how great it is, how powerful it was. We wanted them to be saved and set free from the bondages of hell. Come on, aren't you with me tonight here in church? And, and I mean, but little by little, we, we let it go. We just kind of, kind of just, we got cold. We got caught up. We got busy with our own life. And I'm not saying that what you cut up in isn't important, but what I'm saying is it cannot be more important than him. Are you with me? And, and then we look at our families. And they're not, they're not, they're not one yet. They're not in. Wow. And our hearts could get so hardened to a place to where we stop caring if they make it or not. Wow. And we're born again. Ain't that heavy? I said, is it that heavy? Look at this. Go to verse 38. Whether he comes in the second watch before midnight or even in the third after midnight and finds them so prepared and ready, blessed are those servants. Amen. Which servants? What servants is he talking about? Oh, he's talking about he's talking about those servants that uh, he's talking about those servants that are busy for the Lord. Listen to me. How do you know? Look, look, look at me. Look at me. How do you know, Pastor? That I, how do I get busy? How do I know I have to get busy? How do I do listen to me? I don't have to tell you. The, 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 the God that lives inside of you. Should be so real to you. That he moves you. He tugs at your heart. He speaks to you. 
inside. And you know who it is. And, and if you keep pushing him away too much, after a while he won't speak to you no more. But we, we need him. Church, we, we need him. Are you with me? Look at this. Go with me. Are, are you here tonight? Go with me to the book of Matthew. Chapter 25. And we're going to read this, this little parable. It's not, it's not a big parable, but it's, it's a very important parable for the Christian, for the church. We, we got to have, we got to have the anointing flowing in us. Are you here tonight? It, we we got we to gotta let the Holy Spirit move us. Move us. See, see, how do you know? How do you know when, when you're not there? Listen to me. Because if you look back at the time when you first came to the Lord, how excited you were to be a Christian, to be born again. I mean, nothing he ever would want from you or ask of you would be so, so far-fetched that you wouldn't do it. No. Listen, anything he wanted you to do it. He would speak to you inside of your spirit. Man, you were ready to jump on it. Is there anybody here? But how do you know that, that, that I'm far? Because how long has it been since he has spoke to you? How, how long has it been since you've wrapped your arms around the word of God? And, 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 and just fall in right there in your front room or wherever you're at and wept until, until you heard the Lord speak to you. He's a person. He's a real person. Look what it says here. Then the kingdom of heaven will be, will be like, look at this, will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. Wow. And five were wise, far-sighted. You know, they, they saw ahead. They were always looking ahead. They didn't, they didn't just fall asleep. And look at this. Practical. That's heavy. And sensible. They looked at things with logic. They looked at things with reality. Are you with me, church? Look at verse 3. He says, For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. What, 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 what is that? How do you get oil? How do you get more oil in your lamp? How do you stay burning for the Lord? Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. How do you stay burning for Jesus Christ? How, how is it? Look at me. Look at me over here. The oil, the oil, a lot, many times, listen to me. The oil, will, it will leave. It will evaporate. It will leave you. It's the, uh, the anointing oil. It will go. If you're, if you're not, not going to use it, it will just go. You, that's why you've got to constantly be in prayer, constantly, constantly be seeking the Lord, constantly, constantly doing something for Jesus. Listen to me, because the oil is upon your life. It's upon every believer. Yes. Amen. 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 And imagine what these, these virgins said. What do you mean, virgins? Well, yeah, they, they were born again. They used to go to New Hope. <laughs> but they never got involved. They never did nothing. They came whenever they felt like, did whatever they wanted to. Oh, Lord. But, 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 but Lord, don't ask me to do nothing. I don't want to do anything. And the Lord said, wait a minute. You're serving me. 
You're serving me. Oh, this is this is heavy, because look at this. The oil, the oil can go. That's why the Bible says in the in the Old Testament it says in Leviticus it says they they had the lamps there with oil, and we're not going there for lack of time. But but they had they had the oil lamps there. And they would put olive oil in them constantly, kept them burning with pure olive oil, which represented the anointing of the Spirit of God. Are you with me? At one time, listen to me. At one time. Uh, the, the high priest's sons, amen, which was Moses' brother, his, his two sons, amen, went and tried to put oil that wasn't from the, from the oil that God told them to put in there, and brother, they, they got killed. They lost everything. They, they wanted an easier way. They, they, they wanted... They wanted, listen to me, they wanted an easier way to, to do things. Uh, you know, something simple that didn't, didn't take too much from us. Well, listen to me, Christianity is going to cost you. Serving the Lord is going to cost you. It, it's going to cost me, it's going to cost you. You know, serving God is, is a life. It's a way of life. It's, it's forever. We, we serve Him, we walk with Him. Oh, you better give him a big praise. You know, we, we, we have to realize that, that, that it's not about us. It's not about us. It's about him. And if, if, we, if we can allow him to, 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 to have his way, the other night, I think it was... Uh, Saturday night or, or one of the nights uh, that they were practicing or something. Sister uh, Tina came to me and asked me if the girls had, they had already done praying and, and, their, and, their, and done their class and everything. It was about 8 o'clock, 8, 10, around there. And she asked me if they could leave. I said, ask me later. That's what I told her. Ask me later. I didn't want to have a conversation right there. We we're doing all this. And, and, and so I said, ask me later. And when 9 o'clock came, I said, okay, you guys can go. Okay? Why? Because, see, see look, look at me. Look at me. These girls don't realize that if they only think about themselves, they could be gone and, and, and something could happen that they're needed, or other girls could be trying to get into the home. Anything could happen. And they're not here. And guess who has to call them up to get back here? Well, I have to call Sister Becky, because I don't have their phone number. I have to call Sister Becky, and then Becky calls them, and then we have to wait here until they get back. But we could, we could have spared all that. Is there anybody home? But, but it's not just the home. It's, it's not just the women. It's, it's here, right here. You know, when I came to the Lord in 1973, I made up my mind. I was going to serve him no matter what. With or without. Even if I had to be, a, be alone. Even if I had to do it by myself, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. One day, one day I'm walking down the street on Bridge Street. And I'm heading towards town. And this car pulls over that I knew. I knew all the guys in there. They were from the Brown Berets. They all pulled over. And, and they, they asked me if I wanted a ride. And, and I told myself, oh man, I didn't, want, I didn't want them to stop, you know. But they stopped, and then I thought, well, you can't, you can't think you're too good for them. So I got in. I got in the car. Okay? And I'm sitting there, and sure enough, the driver pulls out the pipe, man, with a dope in it. And starts lighting up and passing it around. So 
So when they got to me, I said, no, I don't do that no more. And the driver looked at me through the mirror. He said, what do you mean, Ray? He said, what do you mean you don't do that no more? I don't do that no more. And I reached in my back pocket. I had a, 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 a little red New Testament. I took it out of my back pocket. I said, I serve the Lord. Oh, listen, it was a test. It was a heavy test. And, and by the time I got out of that car, by the time they took me where I was going, and I got out of that car, <coughs> they're asking me to pray for them. Oh, you're, you're not hearing me, church. You're not hearing. God is good. Come on, give the Lord praise. But, but, but listen, but since 1973, I've understood this, that without him, listen, I knew from the very moment that he came into my heart, I knew I could not make it, I could not exist without him, and I had to, I had to keep that relationship going. I had to pray, I had to read his word, I had to get in there with him. Come on, are you with me, church? I'd walk the street if I had to, and I'd go talk to everybody about the Lord. Is there anybody here with me tonight? Amen. I can tell you some stuff that, I, that the Lord put me through, man, that, that, that I went through that were heavy duty, man. And, uh, but God is good. Amen. I'm here. Amen. Praise God. Look at this. And when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. Why, why did they not have extra? Why don't you have extra? Why don't you have more than you think you have right now? Why don't we have more? Why don't we desire more? I, 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 I don't hear anybody, listen to me, I don't hear anybody. I'm not saying that people don't have more and they, they, they're not in love with God. I'm not saying that. I am saying this. I don't hear a lot, and anybody, I don't hear anybody come up to me and say, Pastor, I need more oil. I, I need more of the anointing. I, I need more. I think the other night with, with Tommy Drum here, Brother, the Lord spoke to Brother Glenn. I don't, remember, I don't forget. And what did he say? The oil. He talked to you about the oil. He says, man, you can't get away from it. Oh, church. We need more. How many here believe you need more of the oil? Look at this. Let's go on. But the wife took flasks of oil along with her lamps. They were so caught up with God. They were so caught up with Him. They were, they were in love with Him. They were in prayer with Him. They were in His Word. They were telling others. They were working for Him. They were moving for Him. And they kept it going. Listen to me. They had a lot, a lot of oil with them. Let's go on. Now while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off and they fell asleep. They began to fall asleep. They began to nod off. Oh, what a powerful God we serve. Say it with me, I serve a powerful God. But look at this. Look at this. But at midnight, at midnight, there was a shout. Amen. A shout. Amen. Whoa. Who was that? A shout. 
Look at this. Not everybody will hear that shout. Not everybody. Believe me. You might, you might want to believe a lot of those preachers on TV that tell you all kinds of crazy stuff, but listen to me. Not everybody will hear that shout. How do you know, Pastor? Because the foolish virgins didn't hear it. They were not ready. When, when, the, when, the, when the Lord called them and they went in the door, we're going to read it in a moment, and he shut the door, then the foolish virgins came behind them. Open to us! I went to New Hope. I went to New Hope Ministries. Open to me, Lord. And I was going to say, yeah, but you never got involved. You never did it. You never got into prayer. You never got into the Word. You never got into helping others. You never got into bringing others to the Lord. You never got busy for me. You never did it. I don't know you. Wow. I had a guy yesterday, I think, Pastor Ed and I and, and uh, Mike, we went to eat at, at, a, at a, a restaurant that we used to go to before. You know, we went back over there the other day, yesterday to go eat some, some pozole and some menudo. He ate about five plates, just like that. So mañana. I got to eat, brother. Mike. Wow, man. Ah. <laughs> anyway, we went over there and, and we were sitting there. Those these two guys talking about their business. They had a, a business. They're talking and we're right here on this side and we could hear them, kind of hear them and they could kind of hear us. We were real close to each other. And when he got up, they got up to leave. He went and paid for, for the, the meal and everything. And then he came back and he tells me, you, you don't remember me, he says, but you, I did to work for you at your house. I look at him and I still can't remember him. But he said, but I remember you, he says. He says, and I, I'm so thankful you gave me work that day. He says, and you know what? He says, I paid for your meal. What a powerful God. What an awesome God. Yes. Amen? Amen? So look what he says. But at midnight there was a shout. And the bridegroom, the bridegroom is coming. He's coming. Oh, I'm telling you, church, he's coming. Oh, no, 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 no. He needs more than a clap from you. He's coming. Listen, he needs you to get involved with him. He's coming. He's coming. He wants you to get really involved with the Holy Spirit, the business of God with the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. If there's ever been a day we need to get in tune with God, you don't know this, church, but I'm going to tell you something. There, there's coming a time when there, all these ministries are falling apart. T.D. Jakes ministries, all these other ministries falling apart. Listen to me. It ain't going to be long before they're going to go after every church. They're going to try to tax every church. They're going to try to take their money money away from or you're not hearing me church we need to bring the harvest in we need to be in prayer we need to work for God we need to pray we need to be part of the wise virgins that kept going after the oil come on how, how many are with me here tonight they can say we need to keep going after them church we gotta do it this is real. This is real. This is about me. It's not about Pastor Randy. It's not even about Pastor, Pastor uh, Robert. This is about Jesus. Amen. This is about the heart. Brother, I don't know about you, but you, every morning that I wake up, every night, every night I, I get up early in the morning, in the, in the middle of the night, and I'll go to the couch to read or pray or, or sometimes even just to sleep. And I'll tell you something, man. I'll get up, man, and, and I'll look, and, and I, I sense, 
I sense it in the air, church. He's coming. The Lord is coming. And, 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 and are we just caught up with our own business? Are we just caught up with our own self? And, and, and think that that's all God requires of me? No, listen to me. He saved you with a purpose. I, uh, I, I need my family saved. Church, oh God. Look at all the craziness out there. Look, look at that. Look, 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 look at me over here. Go try and buy a car. They want to tax you so high. And the interest rates are so high. Go try and buy a house. Is there anybody with me here today? Our borders are unsecured. And I mean, brother, listen, we're not talking just about people from Venezuela. We're talking about communists, Chinese, and, and, and Arabians, and everybody coming into this country. We don't even know where they're at and what they're planning. Oh, no, no, you don't want to hear all that, huh? But I got to tell you the truth. We're, we're at the place, we're at the place, church, listen, that if things don't turn around for America, you better get ready for the rapture. You, you better get ready to blast off. You better get more oil than you got. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Go out to meet him. I want to tell you, he's here tonight. He's already here. You know, you know what? Let me say this to you. Look at me. A lot of us know the Bible so good that it's made us so dull. We're so spiritual that we don't care about anything or anybody. God help us, Father. Don't ever let us be like that, God. Don't let me be like that. Lord, help me. I want, I want to love people. I want to help people. I want to bring people to Jesus. We're here, we're here in this place with purpose. Let me give you a little story. We're here with purpose in this church. When we were in, in, in Edgewater, we had a group of people that would march around our church and they would chant against us. Well, I knew who they were, you know. I, anyway, one Sunday morning, my ushers were at the door, the people were outside of the, of the church because at the door, right at the doors of my church, they threw a bag, a plastic bag full of guts and blood. Like a curse. And they, they looked at me and they said, what are we going to do? I said, I told the usher, get those bags and throw them down the drain over there, and we're going to go have church. We're going to serve the Lord. <laughs> oh, you better give the Lord praise. So when we came here, the first, the first week we were here, those, those kind of people were out here walking around this building chanting against us. We've had attacks from every kind of, you, you can name it, they've tried to put curses on this place, they've tried to do all kinds of things 
And let me tell you something. God brought us here. He is large and in charge. And we belong to Him. Oh, you better give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. We've had them stand out here on this door, in the back door over there, where the women go in and try to put curses and try to do this and that. No, 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 we're not going for that, man. Throw all that junk out of here. And, and they come by with them. No, no, you, you got to go. Vamanos. Go. Leave right now. Why? We're not going to accept all that stuff. The only thing we accept here is the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So look what he says. Look what he says. Verse 7. Then all those virgins got up and put their own lamps in order, trimmed the wicks and added oil and lit them. They added oil. See, but the other ones didn't have no oil to add. Oh, don't, don't let it run out on your life, church. No, no, look at me. This is not about religion. This is not just about coming to church and having a church and going home. This is about Jesus. This is about getting close to God. This, this is about meeting with, with the one that died for me on the cross. Wow. Since 1973, when I went to church, I made it a point to go and meet with the Lord. I didn't want to go to church just to go to church. I didn't want to be there just to see my friends or just to talk to someone or, or, or sell something or whatever. No, I wanted, to, I wanted to be there to meet with the Lord. And let me tell you something, I met with God. I didn't, I didn't let nobody disturb me or, or, or bother me, church. I, I found my corner where I was going to go and seek the Lord, and there's where I went. Is there anybody here with me, church? And it's no different today, church. Listen to me. You, he's here. Él está aquí. And if you will, will determine in your heart Listen, if you, you will have oil. We don't know when it's coming. I believe it's soon. And let me tell you something. you got to have enough oil to put, put in those lamps. Keep your lamps burning. Don't let nothing turn those lamps off. Don't let them cool down. Come on. You can't do that. you got to keep it burning. You know, my wife in our bathroom, she has this little thing like that with some oil in it. It's supposed to smell good. I haven't been able to smell it, but. <laughs> so I told her the other day, I said, there's oil in there. I said, but don't you have something that smells good? Uh, how many know the oil of God smells good? Yeah. Praise God. Huh? Oh, help us, Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Then all the virgins got up, put their own lamps in order, trimmed the wicks, and added oil, and lit them. Now look at this. Look at me. You can't be with one foot in the world and one foot with God. You cannot live like that. You, you, listen to me, you cannot be, your oil will go out. You got to live for Jesus. If you're going to live for Jesus, live for Jesus. If you're going to live for the devil, then go live for the devil. But if you're going to live for God, come on, it's time to get full of oil. Look at this. Then all those virgins, but the foolish virgins, now here we go with the foolish ones. They were always in church, but they, they only went to talk, sell cosmetics, 
and what else? I don't know, man. Out there, they traded stuff and and gossiped a little bit about what was going on with everybody in life, and and you know, I mean, crazy stuff. No, not here, not at New Hope. Okay. All right. But look at this. But the foolish virgin said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Give us some of your oil. Say, Charlie, bro, I worked a long, a hard and long for this oil. You want, you want some of that oil? Tonight you can come and get it. Yeah, give me praise. But the foolish virgin said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. You know what happens? Look over here. When COVID hit, all the churches were emptied. They forced me to shut the doors. I kept church going to the last part of March. The first of March, all the churches were already shut. I kept going. The police came and shut, shut me down, man. They blocked every driveway and everything. When, when the Lord opened us up back up, two months later, we opened up and we started church again. A lot of the people that were here before COVID hit never came back. Look at me. A lot of them will go to Sam's Club, Walmart. They'll go all over visiting everybody. They'll go do all kinds of stuff. But look at me. But they won't go to church. They want to hear it on YouTube. Look up there. Look up there. Foolish virgins. Oh, pastor, you can't judge. I'm not judging. I'm telling you the truth. Help us, Father. And look at this. Give us some of your oil. I said, no, you, you should have come and got, got some of your own. We were there. You could have, you could have, had, you could have had anointing oil any time you wanted it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Right? Look what he says. Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Ah, oh, Lord. Say it with me. No, we can't let them go out. Can't let the oil, can't let the lamps go out. We got to keep them oiled. Come on. We got to keep the anointing on there. I got to keep walking with the anointing. Come on. Anybody with me, church? Now look at the, look at the next verse. But the wise replied, no. No. Otherwise there will not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourself. You know what he was saying? You know what he said? It'll cost you. You can't buy the anointing with, with money. You'll never buy the anointing with money. Are you with me? But it'll cost you. Te va a costar tu vida. It's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you your prayer. It's going to cost you your, the word. It's going to cost you working for him. It's going to cost you getting involved with the Holy Ghost. It's going to cost you. It costs. Are you with me, church? 
it costs us. It's not free. It costs you. That's why he said, go and buy it from the dealers. Oh, Lord. Huh? You can't get it, you can't get it from a dealer. You can't go over there and get, get, go buy it at Walmart and all that other thing. There's no oil there for you and me. It comes from heaven. And you've got to be connected to the, the one that gives the oil. Oh yeah, you better give him a bigger praise than that. How many want more oil? No, how many want more oil? Look what he says. Look what he says. Verse, verse 10. But while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Why wait? Why put it aside? Why not tell yourself, you know what, enough is enough. I ain't going to get involved with all, this, all these people gossiping and earthing in the church and, and getting together with them to do crazy stuff. I ain't going to do that. I'm going, listen to me, I'm going to get together with the Lord. I need Jesus. How many here need Jesus tonight? I need God more than anything in life. Now look at this. But I know that the word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you. Till the next time.